Hi Academic Literacy 2 students, welcome to today's lesson. <coughs> Let's do a quick recap on last on the lesson that we left off with last week. We looked at what a population is in terms of research, right? And we said that that is the full um, extent of a collection of people or things that you wish to research on. Then we said that because it's time consuming to interview or gather data from every person in the population, that you use a sampling method to generate a sample. And a sample is a small representative of the population, which will help you understand your research topic or research problem. Now, in order for protection of personal information and identity, you have to create an informed consent document that will help the participants of the sample understand who you are, why you're doing your research, and that their identity will remain confidential. And your task for last week was to identify five participants, which is your class peers, <clears throat> and record their details. And also to develop your three paragraphs, the first one, you, who you are, the second one, what your research is about. And the third one, the informed consent paragraph. So today's lesson will be continuing from this. And this is the part of data collection. Now, before we get into that part of the lesson, we need to understand the difference between data and information. Data is an individual unit that contains raw materials, right? So it's unprocessed and they don't carry any specific meaning. So you're just gathering. Then information is a group of data that carries logical meaning. So you took that data, formulated it into a group because you found some um, correlation or some link between the data and now it has meaning. So data doesn't depend on information, but information depends on data. So here you can see data is just raw facts, no context, just numbers or text with no meaning, which is then manipulated and converted into information. And now it has context, it was processed, and it has value. Either because you summarized the data, you analyzed the data, and you organized the data. Now it becomes information. Now there are different types of data that you can collect. Remember our different methodologies, qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods. Now, the two types of data that you can collect are predominantly qualitative, and this can't be counted, right? So qualitative data is information that can't be expressed as a number. So how is this data represented? <clears throat> Through words or objects, observations, pictures, symbols, something that must be interpreted. By the researcher. But quantitative data, on the other hand, is data that can be expressed as a number or can be quantified. So there's quantity. Can it be counted? Yes. And this type of data would be represented through numbers, percentages, statistics. You can watch these three videos that will help you understand a bit more regarding the two types of data that can be collected, qualitative or quantitative. <clears throat> there are three videos, so I will suggest and highly recommend that you watch all three, make notes, and then gather a greater understanding of these types of data. Then, when you are collecting your data, you will look at what is called variables or factors. What is it that you want to collect? What is it that you are looking for from your participants? So what are you looking for? What do you want to know? And why do you want to know it? So you're going to have to really think about the questions that you ask your participants. Now, this will be linked to your main research question that you did in your first semester <clears throat> and your sub questions that you did in your assignment of your first semester. Now, when we look at variables or factors, that means what are you going to ask your participants? So, for example, if your topic is bullying, are you going to ask them only about cyberbullying or are you going to ask them about different types of bullying? So, if you are going to only look at cyberbullying, 
That means that your variable is focused on cyberbullying, which means the depth of your research will be very deep. Okay, let me put this guy on the other side. I'll explain this now. <clears throat> so that means you focus only on one aspect, cyberbullying, and you only ask your questions on cyberbullying. Whereas, if you take the shallow approach, that means your variables are scattered, meaning that you are going to ask a little bit of cyberbullying, a little bit of physical bullying, a little bit of emotional bullying, a little bit of mental bullying. So you're going to do different things, which is going to spread your research depth. So this picture over here is kind of a... A, a mad hatter. He's juggling all the musical instruments. So he's not focused on one instrument. Where over here, on this side, here you would only focus on one aspect. So please take note of that and be very conscious of that when you are developing your questions, which will be your task for today or for this week. Here's a YouTube video that you can also watch that will help you understand the difference between the depth of research and how to formulate your questions. Then when you collect data, remember you, you're either doing a qualitative, quantitative or mixed method approach. So quantitative was numbers, qualitative was words and mix is just a mixture of the two. Now there's different ways of collecting data. If you are collecting it for the first time, it is called primary data. If somebody else has collected it and you are just using it, that's called secondary data. But you are going to focus on primary. So there are mainly four methods of primary. Observations, interviews, surveys, and experiments. Now, to save time and for educational research, we are going to go with the survey option, which is the easier one in terms of time, convenience and money or cost. <clears throat> Observations take long because you have to watch your participants and whatever they are doing. But that is only if your research question requires you to observe. Interviews take a bit longer because you're getting in depth with a question and answer and response. So there's a communication process happening here that can take time. And when this is done, you have to interpret all the words from the interview. Experiments is mostly in science, where you want to prove something regarding uh, formulas, etc. And then a survey will be, as you can see here, uh, excellent, good. So you get asked a question or given a statement and you just have to tick yes, no. So they're predefined responses. Whereas with interviews, you don't know what the response is. Observations, you don't know what you're going to observe. Experiments, you have somewhat of a control over it, but you also don't know what is going to happen. If we look at <clears throat> rating scales, so this will be, for example, agree, disagree, excellent, good, fair, poor. You have to rate your experience <clears throat> or your attitude, it's known as an attitudinal scale, right? <clears throat> and the most common one is the Likert scale. These words are big words in the research, which you don't need to know. But it is very cool to actually know what type of data collection tools you get. Now, we're going to be focusing on surveys. So, you are going to create one, but I will explain that later. With a survey you get what's called a statement or a question. Now, a statement would be, I like ice cream. That is a statement. So let me write it here quickly at the bottom for you. I like ice cream. That's a statement, okay? But if I must convert this to a question, let me just make this a bit smaller to give me a bit more space. If I must convert this to a question, do you like ice cream? So now I've converted the statement into a question. Right? So here with I like ice cream, you can use agree, disagree, strongly disagree. You can use a 
attitudinal scale. But with a question, do you like ice cream? This is a simple yes, no question. If you want the person to explain the question, you would just change this verb over here. Do you like ice cream? That's simple yes, no. But if you want them to explain, you would then say, why do you like ice cream? Now they will say, I like ice cream because. Now you will get a better understanding of why the person actually likes ice cream. So, if I just say, do you like ice cream? Now they just say, yes. Now out of your five people, everyone says yes, then you can say 100% of my participants like ice cream. So that would be, remember this numeric, you can give a number, 100%. But if you say, why do you like ice cream? I like ice cream because blah, blah, blah. That becomes qualitative because now there's words involved and you have to interpret those words and you have to make meaning. So then you would say, um, three of my participants like ice cream because... However, the other two disagree and they do not like ice cream because blah, blah, blah. So here you are interpreting what somebody has said based on the question you ask. So you have to ask your questions very carefully. Are they open-ended? Meaning, why do you like? I can give an explanation. Or are they closed questions? So a closed question would just be a simple yes or no type of question or are you doing an attitude scale an attitude scale where i say i agree i disagree it's good it's poor it's excellent there is a rating involved okay so i hope that makes sense to you if not you can just rewind this part of the video and then just listen to it again then here are some examples <clears throat> So, similarly to the ice cream example, why do you eat ice cream at ice cream parlors? So, here you've given them a range of responses. You can predict these. So, they just have to tick and you will count. How many people said expensive? How many people said bad service? So, this is quantitative. But on this side, you took the same question. You did not give any options and you allowed the participant to express the answer. And now you have to read in between and find out why don't you eat ice cream at ice cream parlors. Now you have to go and interpret this response and compare it to your other participants. And that is qualitative. Okay. Now, because this is the easier one, where you just tick and give a number. This does not test your academic literacy or academic vocabulary. This one does, the qualitative. So you are going to use a combination of the two. So you are doing a mixed method. Here are a few more examples, but these are attitudinal scales and quantitative scales. So here you can give a numeric response. How many people said yes? How many people said no? There's two response options for this question example. You can either choose yes or no. Here's a multiple choice. So there's different options you can choose. And here's a rating scale or a Likert scale where you can say agree, disagree, strong. And you notice there's five over here. This is what is then called a five point Likert scale. Okay. Excellent. And then this little picture I'm going to take out, that will be for, okay, let me leave it there. This is, for example, this will be the next lesson next week, where you then take all your responses, insert it in Excel, and get a graph. And that is how you present the data. But that's next week's lesson. Let's not jump ahead. So your task for this week, <clears throat> you have to develop a four-point Likert scale. So remember, this one has five points. So you are not going to include, let me just do this quickly, 
shape you are not going to include this one over here just increase the size here we go you are not going to include a neutral it will either be strongly agree or agree disagree or strongly disagree that's a four point likert scale and your attitudinal survey must have five statements now remember not questions statements so your statements must be related to your research topic it must not be any silly questions it must be specific to your topic and please consider the variables so i'll take you back to that slide how deep do you want the research to go or how shallow are you going to focus on one variable or multiple variables so remember the example of bullying am i only going to look at cyberbullying or am i going to ask five different questions on different types of bullying or am i going to ask five statements on one type of bullying focused or scattered so please think carefully um and consider your depth <clears throat> then b this is the quantitative section now the qualitative section you have to develop two open ended questions they will not be yes no so no closed questions if i see closed questions immediately a zero for this you have to develop two open ended or qualitative questions also related to your research topic related to your let me just make that a bit smaller there we go related to your there we go research topic <clears throat> and like be thoughtful of the questions that you're going to ask <clears throat> and then academic vocabulary and grammar is still important so please use grammatical corrections and vocabulary when you're asking your questions and don't make your words too big that people do not understand again there's no deadline for this this is part of a build up task leading up to your final formative assessment at the end of the term all your work must be typed and saved and the longer you delay to do your work the more the work piles up now there is a prescribed task template that you have to use and your question your survey must not go beyond one page the um task template looks like this there we go so this is your data collection instrument it is a survey <clears throat> over here your participant once you give your participant the survey you will insert their unique participant number which you have done in the last task last week's task okay let me just get this out of the way you did that in last week's task so insert that over there here is a table where you will insert your five statements only over here <clears throat> you will not put anything in here this section is for your participants that's not for you so i'm just going to highlight that gray your section is over here you have to insert five statements regarding your research topic remember your statements are related to your topic and your statements are things that you want to find out from people regarding your topic you want to see who agrees and who disagrees <clears throat> so that is your likert scale then <clears throat> you have to develop two questions and they will not be closed questions they need to be open ended so for example you're not going to write do you think bullying is bad that's yes no you will then rather say why do you think cyberbullying is bad and the person will explain and you have to create the second question as well so this will be your template over here and it does not go over one page please you must work in this template then the requirements will be you have to keep one clean unanswered copy for me to grade or to mark as part of your assignment and then you have to distribute five you have to distribute or give one survey 
with the statements and the question to each of your participants. Remember the five people you chose in your previous task? You have to give them the survey. And they have to answer the survey for you. And when they have done, they have to give it back. When you do the survey, you must indicate what date you did the survey on. So if you develop the survey today and you give it to your participant tomorrow, they have to insert that date when they complete the survey. When they are done with the survey, they must give it back to you as the researcher and you will save the surveys. You will keep it with you. Do not submit it. You have to keep it and wait for next week's lesson and instructions. So please don't lose them. Keep them. You can take photos of them once they are completed and make sure that you have an electronic and hard copy as proof. So that is your template. Five statements related to your topic and two open-ended questions related to your topic. Once you are done, distribute it one to each of your five participants, they will complete it, return it, and you will save their completed survey. Okay, let me just move that back. And that's it for today's lesson. If you're watching this, you are on the video version. If not, there will be a link over here in the PowerPoint and PDF version, which you need to click on to access the video lesson version. Thank you for attending today's class. I look forward to receiving your queries, tasks, and feedback. And always remember, solution before problem or excuse.